I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, we're going to learn A to D conversion. Yes, analog to digital conversion. Now, all these years that I've been teaching this subject, whenever I ask any student, what do you mean by analog or what do you mean by digital? I hear a very stupid answer. Students say analog is something continuous. Digital is something discrete. Come on, that's not what is analog and digital. Yeah, that's their behavior, but that's not what is analog. If that's what you think analog and digital are, you have to watch this video. Okay, knowing what is the meaning of analog and digital and what's analog to digital conversion solves so many questions that have been bothering you since you've been a child. Tell me, all along, haven't you ever wondered how does a song get stored in your phone? How does a song get stored into a pen drive? How did song become that MP3 file? How does that talking tomcat work? Remember that cute little app that we all while growing up have played with? You speak to the cat, the cat speaks back to you, whatever you said, but in a funny way. Anyway, how does your, we your weight, when you stand on a weighing scale, how does your weight show up as a digital number? When you're driving a car or you're riding a bike, how does that speed come up as a digital number? Most importantly, when you're cooking food, you put food inside a microwave oven, you shut the door, you select your uh, temperature and you start. How does it manage to maintain the temperature at that particular level? All of these require A to D conversion. I can go on with examples. I can conduct a whole video of examples. There are so many and still they will not be complete. But I think I've given you enough to make you understand how important it is to know what this is. You know, the best thing in engineering we hear or we learn such interesting concepts. It's just that nobody tells us how are they useful in the real world. If you understand how they are useful in the real world, engineering is fun to learn. Uh, so I try, that's what I tried my best to, whenever I teach a new topic, the first thing I tell students is why you're learning it. How does this make you a better engineer? So what's the scope of this video? First, I'm going to tell you what is the meaning of analog? How does A to D happen? How does this become digital? I'm going to interface. This is an interfacing video. So you're going to interface the standard 80809 8 channel 8 bit A to D converter with 8255, which will be further interfaced with the microprocessor. The microprocessor can be either 8085 or 8086. That's irrelevant. This part of the connection remains the same. So I'm going to be teaching you that. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with something called data acquisition system. All the examples that I gave you of right now, they are all in some way or the other data acquisition systems. This comes as a 10 mark question in the university. So I'll be teaching you what is the meaning of a data acquisition system. So that is the scope of this video. So first things first, what is analog? Analog is any information, listen carefully, any information that enters the computer in the form of a voltage. Analog is voltage information. Two years down the line, three years down the line, somebody in an interview asks you what is analog. Please don't give that stupid answer, analog is continuous. The meaning of analog is voltage information. Are we clear about this? Now, what is voltage information? Every real world information, when it enters the computer, it is in voltage form. So simplest example is happening live right now as I'm talking to you, uh, as I'm shooting this video, there's a microphone. What I'm giving is sounds. The microphone converts that sound into electrical pulses, which means what? Voltage. So what goes from here is analog information, but this is getting stored inside a digital medium as an MP3 file. That means when it goes inside the system, there is an A to D converter, which will convert every different voltage into a different number. Those numbers, a set of those numbers is your digital information. Analog information was voltage, digital information is data. So those set of numbers constitute your MP3 file, which will be stored inside the computer. Let's take more examples. Now, we have an air conditioner. Suppose I have set the temperature to 20 degrees, okay? Now, how does the AC sense the temperature? There is, inside the AC, there is something called a thermostat, a thermistor. A thermistor is basically a resistor whose resistance changes as the temperature state changes. So when temperature changes, because there's a change in resistance, you know the basic equation V is equal to IR. If R keeps changing, keeping I constant, V will keep changing. That means every different temperature will enter 
the system in the form of a voltage. As the temperature changes, the resistance changes, that means the voltage across it will change. Please tell me, did you understand? So temperature will enter in what form? Analog. Now that will be given to the processor inside. Now processor has to maintain the temperature to 20 degrees. So the processor has to compare this temperature with some predefined number. But how will processor compare a voltage? You can't, your compare instruction cannot compare. You cannot write compare A comma 2.7 volts. No, that doesn't work. You can write compare A comma 27 H. That means that voltage has to be first converted into data. Data is not just 0, 1. 0, 1 is how you represent it. Data is 8 bit, data is 16 bit, data is 32 bit, depending upon what size of A to D converter you are using. So based on the converter that you are using, every voltage input will be converted into data. That data will be given to the processor. Processor will match it with its pre-calibrated table. So it knows if this is the data, that means this is the value, that means the temperature is so and so. Then it will decide whether to switch on the compressor or switch it off and that's how it will maintain the temperature. Uh, so on and so forth. So basically the idea of analog is it is a voltage and digital is data. Are you clear? I have just given you the idea. Now I am going to be conducting this whole video but you know what is going on. This is an introduction. You want to learn the whole subject. You want to enjoy learning the subject. Enjoy the science behind things and not just mug up answers. Come on my website that is www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link will be given down below. All you need to do is register yourself as a user, select the course you want to learn. Of course, there is a payment. This is professional service. There will be a charge to it, but I have kept the charge ridiculously low. Something that everybody can pay at the same time, it also makes conducting this whole exercise viable for us. The moment you make the payment, it is instant. You make the payment, the site becomes active for you. You can start watching the videos. This video will be there in two courses, the 8085 course as well as the 8086 course. Uh, both courses have more than 40 videos already covering all the various topics, architecture, introduction, pin diagram, flag register, the whole instruction set, programming, all the peripheral chips, theory topics, interfacing topics and so on. This is an interfacing topic. Anyway, so this like all other videos will be instantly available to you. You can start watching them. Your subscription remains active for a period of six months. So you can watch the videos as many times times as you like. Also with every video there is a button called view notes. When you click that the PDF of that particular topic opens up. So you get the whole answer that you need to write in the exam. Understanding a topic is something else. Writing the actual answer is something else altogether. So you get to understand the topic from the video and then from the PDF you get the answer that you are going to write in the exam. Okay. Hope to see you there. Regardless, wish you all the best. Do well.